Welcome to the Still Digital Academy. The webinar Safe Operation of Industrial Trucks in the Warehouse is presented live by Rea Langkammer, Jürgen Grusch and Janos Poppel. Have a good time. Welcome, dear participants. We are very pleased to have you with us today. Together with Jürgen Rusch to my right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And Janos Poppe to my left. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to drill down into a very important aspect of safety in the warehouse within the next roundabout 40 minutes. We are talking about industrial safety when working with industrial trucks. From our discussions with you, we know that this is an issue for your intralogistics and of high level importance, independent of the country your warehouse is operating in. Let's take Germany as an example. Last year, over 36,000 incidents with forklift trucks and pallet trucks happened. Many of these had severe or even fatal consequences. And in most cases, these consequences could have been avoided. Now, you may wonder how. Well, one thing is clear. Afterwards, you always know more. But we think it would be smart to think ahead. And this is why we want to answer the question of how with some very reliable answers today. But before we start doing this, uh, Janos, let me just give a few hints. So, dear audience, whenever you have a question or a remark, just post it in the chat box. You can post in every language you like. I assure you, none of your questions will remain unanswered. And if there's not enough time during our stream here, we will provide a summary of all the questions asked, including detailed answers afterwards. And of course, again, the webinar will be available to watch on our website. Well, over 36,000 industrial trucks accidents. Janos, one could think that forklift trucks are dangerous machines that tend to start a life on their own. Well, certainly not, but you have to handle them right. Because obviously, wherever machines and people meet in the warehouse, hazardous situations can arise. And quite frankly, this is something nobody can completely exclude. But we can avoid harm to the health of the employees, we can avoid damage to the goods and to the infrastructure proactively. And reduce the costs. After all, a work accident in the warehouse costs about 1,000 euros per day, considering the human resource costs and absence. Let alone costs for the claim competitions, the massive costs for undelivered goods or delayed deliveries, and the resulting negative image. Yeah, and to avoid this, however, everybody working in the warehouse has to be aware of the hazards and the risks. And everyone does not only refer to the drivers, it also refers to the warehouse or logistics management, who are just as responsible. So especially logistics management can provide technical solution, train staff or organize the work process in order to make the warehouse a safer place to work. Which is a big responsibility, yes? But the good thing is, as always in life, there is a solution to every challenge. Here is my suggestion. Let's start with a virtual walk down of the warehouse together. Let's have a look at the places and situations where accident could happen. And then we will discuss what practical solutions are available to mitigate these risks. That seems to be a structured approach. <laughs> Thank you. So as experts of industrial trucks, you spend a lot of time in warehouses and you're often asked for advice, isn't it? So tell us from your experience, so what are the problematic areas? Where are the hazards hidden and uh, what can happen? Mm -hmm. So is it possible to recognize any pattern in this? Yes, Ria. It is possible to categorize these hazards and we have already done so. And this makes it easier for you to select a safety solution that is adequate to handle the risk you are facing. Every warehouse has its individual setting and its individual ranking of risks. 
For me, first and foremost, it's the accidents involving trucks tipping over. This is also confirmed by all the statistics. Why is that the case? Well, these are the most serious accidents, often leading to severe or even fatal injuries for the staff. When such a truck tips over to the side, the reasons for this are mostly that it is driving too fast around the corners or that it accelerates too much when reversing. Another risk that we meet over and over again is that the operator hurts himself on the truck. An injured driver loses control over the truck and that is extremely dangerous for the environment. And there are many ways to hurt yourself on the truck. For example, dropping loads, uh, lack of a restraint system in a collision, or simply a slippery access step may lead to a disaster. So that means how high the risk actually is depends on the equipment and the condition of the truck. Equipment and condition of the truck also define whether the visibility can become a risk. How well can the driver see the driving route or on the load during loading operations? And if there are high loads stacked on the forks, visibility forward is of course also limited. Well, in that case, most drivers would, of course, drive backwards. And it's probably a fact that you don't have eyes in the back. In any case, this makes navigating a risky job, even for careful drivers. Yeah. yeah. Another thing is an unclear surrounding. Reason for this is the individual design of the warehouse, which has less to do with the truck itself. Narrow aisles, crossroads, steep turns or high racks, all these are areas where it is difficult to see where you're going when you sit in the driver's seat. Yeah, and just relying on your own quick reactions is um, not a very reliable safety concept, right? It's better to improve visibility. Visibility is an outstandingly important key factor for safety. For sure, yes. Avoid collisions by all means. And of course, not only those involving humans. Although these are the most important ones, clear. But damage to property can also have disastrous consequences. Injuries to people on one hand. And on the other hand, damages created by collisions of the truck with goods when loading or maneuvering inside the idle. Risks of collisions also include damages caused by careless or inattentiveness users. And this is why they require special consideration. These may be damages caused by touching the goods, the rack or any other object at height. This is a risk I once had a dynamic driver commenting during a vehicle inspection. Very clearly and simple, oops, that heating pipe was a little too low for my mast. Oh, I'm so sorry. In this case, the mast had survived. The very close encounter, but the pipe didn't. During the repair time, the whole hall was inaccessible. A very expensive inattentiveness, but one that can be prevented in several ways. You see, to make things really safe, the operator has to be supported extremely well in order to cover as many risks as possible. Rear-end collisions also are such a risk resulting from inattentiveness especially in crowded areas of the warehouse. With many trucks driving all over the place, the risk of an accident and collision with the trucks in line is very high. This type of risk also includes pedestrians suddenly stepping onto a driveway, although they shouldn't be there, just because they ignore markings or simply have forgotten the meaning of signs. So finally, we have identified two risks, yes, that represents a special category because they arise from a deliberate misconduct. This happens, as we know from practical experience, unfortunately more often than you would like. We've tagged this risk as reckless drivers. You may be familiar with, with this from your own experience. In every warehouse, there's one or two drivers who think they need to replay the toughest scenes from The Fast and the Furious with their trucks in the warehouse. And that is something that leads to massive accidents, harming people, damaging goods, as well as the trucks. In movies, just as much as in reality. Another risk resulting from intentional wrongdoing 
is using trucks without authorization. For example, people driving trucks without permission or are not fit for driving. Or people using trucks that are unsuitable for the given task without thinking about its consequences. Each of these reasons may lead to a disaster. So all these are risks that you have to consider when working with industrial trucks. And as you see, there are quite a few. But the categorization that we've made here will help you to find the solution best suited for the individual risks in your warehouse. And there's a quite a number of solutions available as well. To make it easier for you to find your way around, we will accompany a driver on his job in the warehouse and present some of the most appropriate solutions which can solve these risks. Minimizing risks, Janos, is uh, something that starts right at the beginning of the shift, right? Yeah, indeed. So... A good way to get your hands on some of the hazards we just described is checking access and usage, namely with the control of access and use. In other words, with systems that ensure that only trained operators use a vehicle in a technically perfect condition. After all, a lack of equipment or technical defects are frequent causes for accidents and damages. For example, a very effective principle to counteract this is to use guided safety checks. In this, the driver must answer a number of questions about the technical condition of the truck before starting operation, similar to an airplane pilot in the cockpit, thereby testing the functionalities. The driver simply has to answer yes or no to these questions displayed on the control unit, such as, are operating fluids visible leaking? Of course, It is expected that the driver check these subjects carefully. Are the tires damaged or worn to the rear mark? Does the service brake work properly? Questions like these are available for pre-selection from a catalog, but it is also possible for the logistic manager to program individual questions. If any of the safety relevant questions is answered negatively, the truck will block certain functions and use for the truck will not be possible or strongly restricted. Benefits of the guided safety check. It is a great help, especially for inexperienced users, to do the daily pre-shift check. The check is recorded in the truck control system and can be used for analyzers at any time. When buying a system like this, Make also sure that it is able to work in several languages. In many warehouses, we have people from different nationalities working together. So such a pre-shift check is therefore a very effective solution to minimize risks resulting from technical defects such as overturning, operator injury or collision with trucks or infrastructure. As we have seen, Many accidents have, are caused by uh, the driver not being concentrated, misjudging a situation or being careless. These are behaviors that are often caused by tiredness or sometimes even by alcohol. So this is also a risk that can be averted than access control. Absolutely, especially regarding alcohol. This is a risk that is quite easy to exclude with such a breathalyzer. So ideally, it's placed inside the truck and it works just as the device is used by the police. Just blow into the mouthpiece and the alcohol is measured. But the difference is, with too much alcohol per mil, you won't have to hand over your car keys. No, the truck simply will not even start driving. And this works because the measuring device is connected to the truck control and it locks the steering. So the test is quite easy to do. The user just follows the instructions on the display. And all of this is done within a minute. Time, I think, it's well invested in safety. Again, as a driver, I must play an active role. Or is there any way to get around the test? No, you won't get around it. The tester works like a steering wheel lock. 
And the only key to unlock it is your fresh and alcohol-free breath. With this kind of access control solution, we minimize the potential risks, reckless drivers and prohibited use. Which, to put it clearly, is a gross negligence just as overspeeding is. Yeah, I remember the fast and the furious, right? Exactly. And to stop these colleagues from becoming a danger for everyone, acceleration sensors can be intervened in the truck control system. For example, when a driver merciless raises potholes or concrete sleepers, the sensor detects these mechanical shocks and immediately slows the truck down to inching speed without the driver being able to do anything about it. However, depending on the application scenario, the sensitivity of the sensors can be individually adjusted. This is a very cost-effective solution in order to prevent inadequate driving behavior. Because in order to continue working, the driver must have the vehicle unlocked again by the supervisor. And that surely has an educational effect. So however, if you as a fleet or logistic manager don't want to leave the responsibility of the safety check to your staff alone, then you have two ways to do this. The easiest way is to control the access with PIN codes. So you assign certain people or groups of people certain PIN codes. This is a fast and uh, convenient and flexible startup of the truck. So, and it will make sure that no unauthorized person, for example, the cleaning staff, can use this truck without being allowed to. Restrictively, must be said, it can be difficult to prevent the pin codes from being shared among the warehouse drivers. Unauthorized external staff is one thing, but practically, It often happens that different people working in the warehouse use a truck for different applications. And that may mean that not everybody is equally fit or authorized to do certain tasks. For example, stacking goods at large heights. In order to cover these risks, it is recommendable to use software-based systems. These systems allow you to assign individual access rights and user profiles to different drivers. That means you can adjust the settings of the truck depending on the qualification of your drivers. The maximum speed and lift height will automatically adapt to the respective user. The user is not able to change the settings. One thing is for sure. With this type of setting, you will be able to drastically reduce the number of accidents and the costs for damages in your warehouse. Yeah, and these systems consist of a fleet management software, an RFID reader, and corresponding cards, as well as a modem to transfer the data. And all this equipment is integrated in the truck. The personalized user profile is stored on the RFID card, and this could, for example, also be the ID card of your company. So. When buying such a system, just make sure that the card reader and the modem are compatible with your cards. And of course, check to which extent your trucks are ready to adjust all the respective settings. Okay, so with these access and control solutions, there is a lot you can do to ensure safety even before moving the goods. So during the safety check, we have not found any defects the right driver is in the seat of the right truck, and now the first transport job can start. Driving through the warehouse. Yes, and here, of course, we have a higher risk of colliding with people being in the drive race. One way to stop this are acoustic or optical warning systems. Very effective lighting signals that mark the drive path and the areas in the warehouse where the trucks drive. For example, solutions like this spot here on the floor. They mark the driving path of the truck up to five meters ahead and make the truck visible already from the distance. This is very helpful in unclear areas 
especially when driving backwards, as you can see here at the crossroads. It is important to show every pedestrian the no-go area around the truck to prevent anybody from stepping too close up to the truck without intending to do so. Depending on how you define the problem areas, you can also just mark the sidelines, for example. Or if you're focusing on avoid avoiding collisions when reversing, a light like this one here marks a semi-circle segment around the back of the truck. Or you could use taillights that change the color depending on the direction of the truck is driving in. And this indicates the driving direction of the truck so other drivers or pedestrians in the warehouse can react. All of these solutions can be combined in any way and they are easy to install without a lot of effort. Just bolt them on, connect the power and you're done. So such visible signals already avoid the risk of collision involving people and trucks. Of course, we do have acoustical signals as well. However, bear in mind that they may not be as efficient as you think. For example, if the environment is very brightly lit or very loud or very crowded with a lot of activity. In this kind of situation, the signal may easily be overheard or overseen. So, but the driver of the truck itself will not get any information or warning about possible hazards. This is why it is advisable to use sensor-based safety solutions in addition. Because they will warn the driver as well. They help to avoid collisions with people and with objects. For example, this type of rear area warning device. You know this from your car. At the back of the truck, there is a radar sensor to detect obstacles. Length and width of the monitored area can be freely adjusted. Systems offer ranges up to 30 meters. The sensor is connected to a small device in the front of the cockpit. The system warns the driver with a light and a sound if he is approaching obstacles behind the truck. It also shows how the distance to an obstacle melts away. So when looking at these solutions, just keep in mind that they react to any objects behind the truck, no matter what that object is. So depending on how large the monitoring area is set, it may happen that in tight spaces with a lot of pedestrians, a lot of truck traffic, the alarm is triggered too often. So the smaller the range, the more reliable will be the warning. Consequently, this solution is most suited for environments with little traffic in order to avoid collisions with pedestrians. Yes, but they also stop the driver from simply driving off without having had a look of what is going on behind him. That insisting beeping sound will urge him to turn his head and to look around. An additional benefit is that the system is easy to install on each truck. A really big step to avoid collisions between trucks and people. Ladies and gentlemen, you will take by using radio-based systems. These systems make it possible to avoid the risks of accidents area-wide in the warehouse. Of course, this requires a little more installation work and invest in the beginning. But these solutions offer a way to cover several safety risks with one single installation. The working principle of these systems is to build up bidirectional communication between the trucks, pedestrians and infrastructure without the need for visual contact. Gates, entrances, pedestrians and trucks are equipped with radio modules. On the truck, the module is connected with the truck control system. This ensures that the truck approaches a dangerous area, the behavior of the truck will be automatically controlled. For example, the truck will reduce speed. In the yellow zone, there will only appear a warning signal. That way, everyone will have time to adapt their behavior according to the situation. The system will only actively affect the speed of the truck in the red safety zone. The size 
of these warning areas crucially depends on the type of trucks and their maximum driving speed. So in general, the reliable range of these radio-based systems is 30 meters. However, strongly reflecting environments may reduce the efficiency of this kind of systems. This type of radio-based system is also very suitable for mixed operation of automatic and manual driven trucks without any risks. So the automatic truck will continuously emit signals and staff who work in the area are always warned when they are approached by an automatic truck. Thanks to this small radio module on their arms or in their pockets. So radio-based systems also allow to set up different hazard areas in the warehouse, depending on the level of risk and apply different rules for the trucks in each individual area. That is very effective, for example, to avoid damage at heights. So as Jürgen's example with the heat pipes um, already illustrated, yeah? for sure, with this kind of system, no dynamic driver will ever stand the slightest chance to create a new design for the gate. Indeed, no chance at all. The system knows that the gate is three meters high. Anything higher will be automatically stopped. So if the driver has extended the mast, the truck control will stop the truck before passing the gate. Or it would stop the truck from extending the mast. This way, speed limits can be set for every area in the warehouse. This can be done centrally from the warehouse management system. And with this approach, it is also possible to avoid damages or collisions inside the very narrow aisle. Alternatively to the radio-based solutions we have talked about before, we would like to introduce to a system that uses RFID tags or barcodes. In a first step, you have to define the areas within the narrow aisle that require additional safety regulations. On this basis, a three-dimensional map will be stored in the truck control system. RFID tags placed in the floor or barcodes attached to the racks will help the truck to determine its position in the warehouse. When driving, the system will detect the specific conditions applying to the area it is in and the truck will automatically adjust its driving behavior. The benefit? Without worrying about the environment, the operator can fully concentrate on his auto picking job because the truck will automatically react safely to any risk set situations. For example, by locking the steering when exiting the aisle or locally limiting the lift height inside aisles with different ceiling heights or lowering the mast to protect lamps or sprinkler systems. This is to name only a few possibilities of this effective safety system for V&A trucks. Important is that this system protects the truck, the goods and the infrastructure, but it doesn't provide any protection to the pedestrians. Therefore, the VNA trucks have to be equipped with personal safety scanners in addition. But besides the very narrow aisle, if you want to avoid excessive speeding, you can do this with less effort and more cost effectively. This can be done with ultrasonic sensors because they do not need any additional installed equipment. The system only requires a single sensor mounted on the roof of the truck, which is connected to the truck controller. And during driving, the sensor automatically measures the height of the ceiling and controls the driving speed respectively. Especially when the truck has to switch between indoor and outdoor operation. A lot of time, this feature considerably minimizes the risk. So when driving outdoors, the driver can usually make use of the full potential of his truck. But when entering into a hall, the drivers often forget to adjust the speed and to drive slowly inside the warehouse. And this will be automatically taken over by the sensor. And whenever the truck driver is in a hurry to do the next job, the top risk is tipping over. 
Tipping over accidents can happen with these heavy counterbalanced trucks just as easily as with these smaller high pallet stackers. As I already said, most of the time the reason for this is high speed when cornering. This is a problem that can easily be fixed with an assistance system that reduces the driving speed depending on the steering angle. As you see here in the video, the reach truck will come to the corner and will automatically reduce the speed by the steering. The same on the next curve, and so the driving speed is, every case, the maximum safe speed. Yeah, and this example shows once again a key factor of your safety in the warehouse is to assist the driver in his transport tasks. So we have seen on our way that risks lurk behind literally every corner in the warehouse. But there is a solution ready to effectively face and fight them. Once the driver has reached the rack or lorry safely, thanks to these precautions, the storage and retrieval process begins. And here, a lot of things may go wrong again. Yeah, let's stick with the risk of tipping over. Jürgen, could you give me a hand, please? Yes, sure. It's always tricky when the operator overestimates the load capacity of the truck. So too much load on the fork and the truck will tip over into the rack. To avoid this, there are assistance systems that limit the lift height with respect to the load weight and by that prevent the truck from being overloaded. So let me show you how this works with this high lift pallet stacker. The display shows an active load capacity diagram. At the bottom left, you can see the maximum lift capacity of this truck, which is 1.6 tons. Above, you can see the maximum lift height depending on the load. So currently, it is 5.5 meters with no weight on the forks. Now, Jürgen is going to pick up the load and he will see the load weight on the fork in the display. So in this case, one ton. He can also see how high he will be allowed to lift that load. In this case, 4.2 meters. The lifting height is continually indicated in the display, as you can see at the top right. And now things get interesting. So Jürgen is approaching the four meter mark. At first, we see a warning to stop the lifting. The next step is a clear message, capacity is exceeded. And although Jürgen is pressing his thumb on the button, he can't lift the forks any further. And this is because the system automatically cuts out the lifting just before the maximum lift height is exceeded. And the operator is requested to lower the mast. By the way, the height measurement is very simple yet very precise. The height is measured with an ultrasonic sensor mounted here on the top of the truck. Yeah, the system works the same way also um in counterbalanced trucks, right? And which covers several safety risks at once. So the higher you want to go, the more important it becomes to ensure a stable standing. Oh, I actually still feel quite safe here. <laughs> yeah, but that's because of your beloved colleagues mm. here, Jürgen. <laughs> so I'm talking about high rack storing at 10 to 13 meters. So that can make a reach truck swing or tip even if it doesn't have too much weight on the fork. For example, when adjusting the position in the front of the rack. They may not only damage the truck, it can also damage the goods or the racking. Yeah, but this can be avoided with assistance systems that help reducing the movements of the truck to a minimum. So the operator has to maneuver as little as necessary or move the mast only a little bit in order to place the load in the requested bay. What, for example, systems do that allow you to preset lifting heights. 
they move the mast exactly to the right level just on pressing a button without having the operator to do anything manually. Only picking up or dropping the pallet is done manually. Good systems offer maximum flexibility. Different area, ales can be programmed with various compartment levels. And that means the driver drives down the ale to the position he needs to go. Then he just selects the area of the racking and the target level. And the truck measures the height with an LED measuring device. The system works independently from the environment. It does not need any orientation text in the rack nor any other installation in the warehouse. And to attain the maximum safety effect, make sure that the system is also able, like this one, to detect whether the operator wants to pick up a pallet or wants to place it in the rack and respectively adjust the lift height of the forks. Another innovative measure to increase the stab stability of the truck when the mast is extended to great heights is to induce counter oscillations. To do this, this kind of a system calculates the oscillations of the mast and automatically generates a counter impulse when the mast is extended above a certain height. This constantly keeps the mast vertically stable. And depending on the performance of the selected system, it will reduce the oscillation time of the reach track by up to 80%. The operator can work stress-free, and that is generally an important prerequisite for safe work processes. Yeah, because if you're under stress, you tend to make mistakes. And talking about stress and stability, Rhea, we could stay in the very narrow aisle and take an overview on the working environment from a height of 18 meters. I did this once before, a very challenging experience, uh, I, I can tell you. Um, I think anyone who's ever ridden in a man-up forklift at this height knows that even a minimum of swaying could make you sweat. Um, I got seasick and I admire people who can stand this for a whole shift. But that's not necessary. I think the driver just wanted to challenge you a little bit. Uh -huh. Or the truck was not fitted with the respective assistance system. The reason for the swinging movement that stressed you and that may even cause the truck to tip over outside the aisle roots from bumpy floors. But the dangerous consequences can be avoided with a system that compensates the bumps in the floor in real time directly on the truck, processor controlled. And this is done by a smart interaction of mechanical and electronic sensors that permanently scan the surface of the floor. If the system detects a bump in the floor across the drive path, the load wheel immediately adjusts and by that proactively avoids lateral movement of the truck. So a very good system allows to compensate bumps in the floor of up to 10 millimeters at the maximum driving speed. A system like this would be interesting for you if you don't want to go through a cost-intensive refurbishment of your hall floor and at the same time increase the safety for your staff working in front of the high rack. In practical applications, we have seen that absence due to illness have substantial dropped after installing this type of system. Okay. Well, um, in that case, I can dare again to have a look at the warehouse from a height of um, 18 meters. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will surely open Good. a fascinating pr perspective. And I promise you will love to cruise smoothly along the aisle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will appreciate this, but mostly I'm fascinated um, mm. by accident-free and safe intralogistics, to be sure. And therefore, dear participants, we recommend you these safety solutions. But not only technical solutions will lead to enduring safety. Although industrial trucks are complex working machines and they require appropriately well-trained staff, who learn to operate safety. 
So therefore, staff should be trained regularly to recognize and handle risks and hazards. And that ranges from safely changing the battery to upsealing from the VNA stacker. This is not necessarily a boring matter. On the contrary, depending on the provider, it can be a real motivator for the whole warehouse team. Knowing the risks and hazards in the warehouse and reacting appropriately is the one and hinge factor to increase the safety when working with industrial trucks. The other factor is to take proactive action in order to stop some of these risks from the involving it all. You can do this by having trained service technicians do regular, regular maintenance on the trucks. Besides review and maintenance works, they will also carry out all the necessary repairs and they are authorized to carry out all legally required safety inspections. And you can do this by only using genuine spare parts from the original manufacturer. Because only these parts are precisely made and individually designed for the respective truck. And they are subject to strict quality assessment. That makes them endurable and more resistant to wear. So they are indispensable for the safe operation of your trucks. And as a logistic manager, you can do this by benefiting from digital connectivity using fleet management tools, for example, which collects all the truck data from across all your sites to provide you with a means to clearly analyze your fleet. All those such tools are often used to optimize operation times and cost reportings. These software systems are able to analyze the data and give you important insights on how to optimize your fleet. And if they are powerful enough, they can even help you to increase the work safety of your fleet. In addition, a fleet management system can also schedule and monitor maintenance and inspection intervals and make sure that your trucks are always in a safe condition to operate. Yeah, and this could work for example like this. You could probably use an application for maintenance control where the maintenance and inspection schedule for all your trucks appear. Like in this example, green marks already performed service events, yellow are the upcoming events and the red ones, they indicate a problem. And if we click on it, we see there was a maintenance planned but was not carried out. Regarding safety, an urgent hint to take action to call the service technician immediately. So this function assists logistic managers to assure a safe operating condition of its vehicles. And when the technician has done the maintenance, you can click on the green icon and there you will see all details of the repair and have the history of all service events of this truck immediately available. This is a very helpful when you have audits with the work safety authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a lot of information on risks and hazards. And uh, you've seen many solutions how to attain the maximum safety in working with industrial trucks. And you noticed no solution is able to cover all of the occurring risks. Which ones you are going to use, of course, depends on the individual condition that you have in your warehouses. So in getting your intralogistics to a top safety level, we would like to recommend you to keep following actions in mind. First, set the technical environment up to prevent accidents and harm to the health of your staff. Make sure that these solutions are always state-of-the-art technology. We have set up some signposts showing you how to approach this. Second, organizational measures. Take action in order to organize safe drive paths for the trucks and walkways for pedestrians. Make sure that the trucks and technical equipment is regularly maintained and inspected. And third, person-related measures. Organize staff-related actions, for example, 
regular training and instructions of the staff in order to enable them to work safely and responsibly with the available technical equipment. Implementing all of this, of course, requires a lot of work. But be assured it will pay off in the long run. And of course, if you need any consultants in this respect, so here we are. So let's get started moving your level of safety to the top. <laughs>